This is Pastor Richard, and you are watching Hymnal 101 with Higher Things. Antiphon, colic, canticle, vespers, matins, rubrics. Uh, what do these words mean and why are they used? Let's think about it this way. Several years ago, I took my son to his first NDSU football game in Fargo at that Fargo Dome. And I remember we sat back off of the end zone and I explained to my son, now at this time we stand up and we cheer. Another buys in first down. And he said, dad, what is a first down? Dad, what is a touchdown? Dad, what is a field goal? Dad, what is interference? What do these words mean? You see, when it comes to football, there's a certain language set, a certain language that you must understand to comprehend and understand how the game is working. The same thing happens with baseball. The same thing happens with hockey and golf and so forth. If you're watching also maybe a movie with a lawyer movie, uh, the courtroom drama, there's going to be words such as objection, sustained, overruled, all these different words that are used that are part of that vocation, part of that sphere of context that are arranged for that particular purpose. Now, the same thing happens when it comes to the church and especially when it comes to, yes, that hymnal. Now, thankfully, one of the things you will realize when it comes to our hymnal, one of the very first things in the very beginning of our hymnal is this wonderful, wonderful tool, and it's called this. It's called a glossary. It's right here. Yes, a glossary. You can actually look at this glossary and see words such as absolution and alleluia, amen, antiphon, benediction, canticle, collect. It even shows you how to pronounce those words. Now, the reason why this is so incredibly important for us as we go through Hymnal 101 is this. As we go through and we look at the divine services, as we look through the services such as Matins and Vespers, we may find ourselves scratching our head like my son at that first football game and saying, what does this mean? And that is absolutely okay. And it's nothing to fret because we do have this glossary right before us that we can page back to and indeed see what those words mean, the history of those words, how to say them and how they function with our hymnal. So in the weeks to come here, as we continue to ponder and look through our hymnal, we do have this wonderful resource right at the very beginning of our hymnal, that glossary that we can turn to and say, ah, that's what that word means. That's how I say it. I say it, Kyrie, and it's from the Greek word Kyrie eleison, which means Lord have mercy. So every time I hear and see that word Kyrie, it's that what? Lord have mercy. And it, oh, it comes from Mark chapter 10, verse 47. And uh, man, that's just a great thing to know. So indeed, as we go through Hymnal 101, and as we look at these different terms, as we ponder them, we will find ourselves turning back to that glossary, paging through, finding those words, seeing what the definition of those words are. Indeed, as we learn to use this hymnal, not only on Sundays, but in our daily lives, and especially at home with our family as well. So we'll catch you next time on Hymnal 101 with Higher Things.